Welcome to the GCN show, the 25,000 Spins Coromandel Classic 2019. Woo! Hello and welcome to the GCN show, brought to you by our mates at Wiggle. This week, Pro Cycling's pressure gauge, are we close to the limit of what is humane? Yeah, but at the other end of the spectrum, we've got news of an office with a dedicated cycling room to boost staff well-being and free bike hire on the UK National Health mm. Service. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that when you're hot, you're hot. Not from personal experience, of course, but... Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, but from Matty van der Poel, who fresh off the back of winning possibly the greatest one-day race of all time, then goes straight into winning on his mountain bike, despite getting held up by a tractor in the prologue time trial. That's class. And on other news, sometimes hanging on is the best course of action. Check out this. This is Davide Chimelai staying upright against all the odds after that tussle with Olivier Legac, who almost as miraculously escapes with only minor cuts and bruises. Not bad after laying it down at 60k now. They are a breed apart, those sprinters, aren't they? Yeah. And it is, well, easy to think that they are wired up completely different to the rest, to the rest of us because of the risks they do have to take on a daily basis. But it has just come out that sprint legend Marcel Kittel has decided to step away from the sport for the time being, citing exhaustion. Yeah, his Katusha team have agreed to terminate his contract with immediate effect. Now, Kittel himself hasn't actually given much information as to what is going on, but there is speculation that actually it's mental exhaustion as opposed to physical exhaustion. Certainly, he has been struggling for results on the bike for mm. the past couple of seasons. We're hoping, aren't we, that all it's gonna take is a bit of time away from the sport and then he can come back even stronger than he was before. Yeah, fingers crossed and good luck to you, Marcel. But he isn't an isolated case because British pro Peter Kenner has also said that he's gonna take time away from the sport indefinitely. And he did cite mental health, saying he was struggling on and off the bike. Yeah, and he's just 29 as yeah. well, isn't he? And then, of course, Moreno Moser just this week at 28, has also announced his retirement from the sport. Now, he, as the nephew of the great Francesco Mosa, has suffered under a huge weight of expectation from the Italian public, particularly given that his career started out so promisingly with a win at the prestigious Tour of Poland, and even more prestigious, perhaps, Strada Bianca race as well. Yeah, the question is though, is pro cycling becoming a pressure cooker? Or is it just a coincidence that three all, all three big time pros are all taking time away from the sport at the same time. Well, the word on the inside is that potentially, yeah, things are getting even tougher. Not to say things were ever easy. I mean, I can't imagine the pressure that riders were under during that Wild West doping era. I've got a degree of sympathy for those guys. I'll be honest, I don't think they went into the sport with the intention of becoming criminals. It's not like embarking on a career as a bank robber, is it? No, exactly. They're just kids that loved cycling, like you and I, mm. who got led astray we probably best park that debate there and leave it for another day before things go nuclear in the comment section, James. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, but there are a number of factors that could be compounding the situation, like the added inflation of the salaries for the top riders that if they're not performing, and also the pressure of the up and comers, because if they do get a big result, there is the ability of getting hundreds of thousands of pounds pay rise. Yeah, that's right. And secondly, the margins of victory are becoming ever tighter, mm. aren't they? So every gram counts, meaning that there's a high prevalence perhaps of disordered eating and zero downtime for these guys. Yeah, and number three, there's everything that is monitored. You know, there's your heart rate, your power, your weight. There are also recovery parameters. So it's a 24 hour job, isn't it? Yeah, 12 months a year now as well, because mm. Whereas there used to be an off season, now I think riders are expected to be in pretty much top shape all, all year time. round. Now the pressures of pro cycling might pale into insignificance next to the likes of professions, of healthcare, or even the armed forces. But is the difference because there isn't a facility put in place for the riders? I mean, Bradley Wiggins did say on Eurosport that even the teams with psychiatrists they're not helping the riders, but more working on behalf of the teams. Yeah, it was a good point, wasn't it? It's, it's not that they're not working for the riders, it's just that it's always with the intention of getting them winning mm. again. 
I mean, yeah, that's a difficult one, isn't it? And the, the cruelest thing of all for me seems to be that, you know, the pressure is there when cycling is your profession, but for the rest of us, cycling is overwhelmingly beneficial for our mental health. That video we filmed at Oxford University earlier in the year was eye-opening, such was the extent to which it can help individual people. Yeah, absolutely, and we did have a message from uh, a GCN fan who's watching one of the videos called Johan Fischer, and he actually bought a Watt bike for his office. And the big honchos of that uh, business or that company decided to dedicate a Zwift room for cycling. How cool is that? That's super cool, isn't it? It's mm. mega tricked out as well. Mm. So this was available for anyone who worked there. You could book time on it using an Outlook calendar. And there you go. It seems really far-sighted, doesn't it? Can we, can we actually... get one? Uh, well, yeah. I, I think we'll try and find a yeah. room, James. Uh, I don't think we need to book time on bikes to be fair, true. mate, you and yeah. I. But no, seriously though, really, really good idea in that you're ensuring that your workforce is fit and healthy and happy and all it takes is a little bit of time, even on an indoor trainer. There you go. Um, make sure you let us know what you think. This is a really sensitive topic, of course. How much cycling is too much cycling? Should there be safeguards in place for professional cyclists, men and women, of course? Uh, and also, perhaps controversially, is an ability to withstand that kind of extreme pressure actually just part of being a top sports person? Let us know in the comment section down below. Right, it's time for our bit of weekly inspiration, that part of the show where we pick out our three favourite photos that you have sent in this week of your bike riding. Don't forget that even third place gets 50 pounds of wiggle vouchers, second place gets 75 quid, whilst first place gets 100 pounds of vouchers from our mates over at Wiggle. So that's pretty cool. James, who is in number third, rounding out our podium this week? In third place, we've got Greg Judin from New South Wales and Australia. And we've gone for a sunrise pick. I'm, I do love a nice sunset or sunrise. And I did choose these first two, gotta be honest. So this one, I have to say, is really, really good and inspires me to get up in the morning. Yeah, I, I like the fact that he's out of the group as well. That's pretty mm. cool. Uh, normally, you know, my rides can be a little bit solitary of the morning, but you know, that's nice. That would get me out of yeah. it. Uh, right, second place, uh, we do have a solitary sunrise pick. <laughs> Thanks, James. Uh, this is from Volker in the Al Quadra Desert, just outside of Dubai, riding from 4.30 a.m. until 8 a.m on the uh, 120k desert bike path they've oh! got. On a TT bike as well. Look at that, that road is unreal as well. It is, oh, purpose that... built for cycling. It is, isn't it? No, oh, I mean it literally is. is. Oh, it is? It, it literally is, Have you yeah. been down that road? No, oh. but I just know about it. Uh, <laughs> he, knows every, of, he knows everything, does he? Well, I've only ever been to the Dubai airport, I'm <laughs> oh. but Anyway, there we go. Uh, right, a worthy winner of 75 quid. And who is the winner this week, mate? The winner of the 100 pounds voucher goes to Lynn in the Canadian Rockies of Alberta. Now look at this for a photo. Sorry, whereabouts in the Canadian Rockies, James? You just yeah. scroll past that. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna... Yeah, let's just scroll past that one. But look at that photo! No, no, no. What is it? Where are they? Okay, I'll give it a go. Canascus? Uh, Canascus? I've got no idea no, if you yeah. haven't either. <laughs> but look at that for a photo, mate! Cananascus. Let us know in the comment section how much we butchered that particular Canadian <laughs> place name. But yeah, no, back to the photo. That is a perler. That yeah. is inspirational. I mean, that does look incredibly dramatic. Up. Yeah, it looks a little chilly. Yeah, it does. But hey, that should get us out the door, Definitely no matter what like the season. The Himalayas, isn't it? Does. Utterly incredible. Brilliant. Okay, keep those photos coming in. Of course, three winners every week. If you want to be in with a chance, then you can use the hashtag GCN Inspiration on Instagram, or of course, the uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're going to start off with a story from here in the UK. The National Health Service have given GPs the ability to prescribe six months free bike hire to their patients in order to increase their physical activity and to boost their mental health. Yeah, and also uh, reduce cardiovascular disease as well. Really, really interesting that. Only available uh, in Wales at the minute, but you'd think that if it gets the desired results and also long-term saves mm. the NHS money, that it could well roll out nationwide, if you pardon the pun. Right, now sticking with freebies for cycling then, United Airlines have done a really nice gesture and they're offering discounted fares and free bike transport for their customers flying to San Francisco for the AIDS Lifecycle event, which is a ride from San Francisco to LA. 
Now, how cool is that? That is really cool, isn't it? It takes place mm. at the end of June. Uh, mm. Presumably, it's still time to sign up for it and take advantage of it. Uh, right, now, Giro d'Italia. Let's talk Giro. Perhaps all eyes were on the battle among the GC contenders on stage one, but there was one rider raising eyebrows mid-pack because he didn't use a time trial bike on the opening day's time trial stage. He didn't even use an aero helmet. He used a lightweight bike. Why? Because he was going for the KOM. Of course, as you do uh, on the pretty fierce two kilometer climb that ended that 8K time trial. Not for Strava, I might just add, but actually it was a gamble to take the mountains classification in which he duly did and claimed the first jersey of the race, which is pretty good effort, actually. Yeah, he looked quite cool in hindsight, didn't he? Did. Did, didn't he? Uh, right, if you want more Giro news, you can, of course, check out the racing news show that went up the day before this one. But more to the point, make sure you head over to our Facebook page each and every day because we've got a wrap-up show after each stage where there'll be expert analysis and stuff from us as well. Mm. Right, so let's just stick with racing news just for one moment longer. Mark Cavendish and his Epstein Barr virus that has played the last two seasons for poor Mark. Now he has had a recent blood test that shows he is under the threshold for the virus, meaning potentially he's gonna bounce back in time for July and yeah. the Tour de France. First time in two years mm. he's under the threshold for Epstein Barr. So yeah, fingers crossed for him that he can get back for the Tour. I quite wanna see him take yeah. Eddie Merckx's record for number of stage wins, it? but still, big ask. Big ask for him, but, mm. uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, right, we are going to stick with racing one moment longer still, actually, because unfortunately, <laughs> another skeleton has crawled out of the closet of naughty cycling. Oh, naughty by name. Naughty by nature. James, that's terrible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the German sprinter, uh, Danilo Hondo, has confessed on German TV that he blood doped for almost his entire career. He rode for such infamous teams now, I think it's fair to say, Telecom and yeah. Gerald Steiner. Uh, and he subsequently lost his job as a coach at Swiss Cycling, followed that. And it's basically because he's been caught up in this new Erfurt scandal uh, with, a, uh, with a dodgy German doctor. Did always wonder, you know, ever since I saw that guy traveling to the Tour of King High Lake back in 2009, wearing an all white shell tracksuit, I just wonder whether something wasn't quite right about him, but you know. Sai, that was the fashion of that time. I mean, I can't remember. No, it wasn't. It was 2009. Quite a long time ago. That's never been fashion. <laughs> right, last but not least, Physique have released a new colorway for their legendary Infinito R1 shoe, just in time for the Giro. The 1919 commemorates the race route of 100 years ago and is dedicated to the fallen in the First World War. Yeah, which was 100 years ago this year as well, wasn't it? I know. Yeah, irrespective of where the design comes from, it looks absolutely awesome, doesn't it? Particularly like that reflective micro oh, upper. Like so that. it looks kind of pale grey, normally, but then get it in the dark, shine some lights on it, and boom, it's like bright white. You're going to be nice. seen everywhere, Si. Yeah, I'm into that, big time. <laughs> uh, right, speaking of uh, coveted stuff, a quick shout out to our own merch. These t-shirts are limited edition, so make sure you get in quick. And we've also got a sneak peek of the next in our epic climb series. This time, it's the Mortarolo. Yes. Look at that, that looks cool, but my word, is it a brutal climb? Yeah, that is a horrific climb. But I would say as well, there are still some places left for our next events. GCN Avordias in August, and at the end of August, we've got GCN Solbeck. Yeah, both amazing places to go and ride your bike. Unfortunately, we'll be there as well. Yes, yeah, the company that might let, the, let it down a little bit. It's now time for Hack forward slash bodge. Right side start us off, I reckon. Okay, first up we've got this one from Graham. This is a well-known hack, but always worth mm. repeating. Uh, before he'd set up his tubeless tires tubeless, uh, he got a hole in them, no problem if you've got an inner tube in there, but in order to then use them tubeless, he stuck an inner tube patch on there. And yeah, lo and behold, it does indeed work. It does work. Nice, very nice indeed. Simple, but effective. <laughs> Next one we have from Sean on his Canyon Ultimate. He was stuck without a head unit, mount or holder, and he used a spoon. Look at this for a bodge. Well, I'm not gonna lie, James, it looks neat, but ultimately, he's got a spoon <laughs> on the front of his Canyon Ultimate to hold his head unit on. I would never have thought of that, though. No, I wouldn't. Well, your nan would have 
done done a head in if you yeah. drilled a hole in a, in the silver silverware. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, too fair. Gets you out of jail, and it does look quite neat. But uh, but yeah, a temporary measure, I'd say. Yes, well, for sure. He's even drilled a hole in it by the look of it. Well, fair play. <laughs> he's, he's got imagine him riding around there for you know years on end with his teaspoon. That's right. Okay, next up we got this one from uh, Stephen. Now this. This is not something I'd thought of before, but now no. I want a pair. So in order to walk around more comfortably whilst wearing road shoes, he's hollowed out a pair of giant sandals so that his cleats <laughs> fit neatly through them so he can keep his shoes on and walk at the same time. You'd, Genius. You'd feel like the Don in those, wouldn't you? Like platform cycling shoes. Yeah, I would not feel like the Don. I'm not sure I could get sandals big enough, but still, that would be amazing. I, yeah, I, like use, that. I could use your sandals actually, my feet are tiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a hack for me. <laughs> <laughs> Next one we have from Jan Borjo. Jan Borjo. Uh, on Instagram, and he sent in this over a GoPro light attached to the underneath of his Garmin. And look at that. There that's we go, a, hack, a waterproof oh. GoPro light. I mean, that seems pretty robust, and I reckon that is going to kick out some serious lumens. 300, he said. 300 lumens. There we go. <laughs> right, <laughs> this last one I think is a proper, proper hack. This is a 3D printed tool storage system. So we've seen a few aero bikes, uh, well actually a non-aero bike, Specialized Rude Bay's got one of these, but this is the first time I've seen one retrofitted to an existing bike. So that looks like a Canyon Air Road, mm. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, but look at that, he's managed to get two inner tubes, the smallest inner tubes I've ever seen in my life, James. Yeah. Plus CO2 canister, plus tire levers, patches. Genius, and a valve extender as well. Say goodbye to saddlebags, and well, that I think does everything, doesn't it? And more speed as yeah, well, yeah. presumably it makes your bike more aero. More aero. Perfect. Let, let us know how you've got it fixed on there. That's the one thing I'm quite intrigued about. Mm. All right, next one, Sai. Oh, there's one more. Yeah, we've got this one. So uh, you're worried about your bike being on top of your roof. Why don't you put your sea suckers inside, attach them to the window, and look, you've got storage inside a bus. Well, that is quite neat, isn't it? It looks good, doesn't it? Would you put your, uh, because sometimes you don't want to have your bike on the top of the roof and get wet and dirty. So sticking it inside, Perfect. I don't really have a car big enough to have my bike well, mounted you don't have on a bus. the window like that. <laughs> no, but if I did, I would yeah. contemplate it. Yeah, well there you go, there's an innovative use of a, of a sea sucker rack. Uh, fantastic. All uh, right, well that is uh, Hack or Bodge for this week. Some absolute perlers, and then one with a spoon. Uh, if you want to get involved for next week, remember you can submit your hacks and bodges using the hashtag GCN Hack on Instagram or Twitter, or of course, the uploader, the link to which is in the description. Caption competition now, your chance to get your hands on a GCN Camelback water bottle. We give you a photo, you write a funny caption, stick it in the comment section and we choose the winner. The winner from last week is about to be revealed. This was your photo, John Degenkolb having a swig, not looking terribly happy. It didn't like it, does he? No, it didn't. The winner, Barb303, with the caption, I gave 100% and look what I get in return, 0%. I mean, that's a fair caption, isn't it? It is, yeah, see what you did there. That is good, that is very good. Right, James, what's this week's photo? Right, this week we have this photo in. Now I came up with this caption. Ask me what the time is. What's the time, James? Well, I'll show you on my tattoo, mate. The time is, time for you to get a watch. I, it's elaborate, it's definitely elaborate. It's awful, isn't I'll it? I'll tell you that It's awful. Me, yeah. Uh, Awful. Normal service will resume next week, hopefully, when, <laughs> when, Lloyd's, in. when Lloyd is back. Oh. Uh, anyway, there we go. No, it's you've got to make a start, and uh, hopefully it will encourage more people to enter well, in the comment section. Everyone knows so. they're going to beat that one. That's it. I've set the benchmark, and it's pretty low. Yeah, there's it's a low barrier low. for entry this week. But uh, anyway, there we go. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> it's now time for comment of the week. And this is the chance that we get to pick out some of your comments. Can I start with the first one that I really like? Go for it, mate. All right, the first one comes under don't wear underwear on a bike ride. From Gribbo9999, wear your knickers on the outside. Also, use a red cape and you'll just fly. See what Genius. Yeah, Gribbo, yeah, nice. <laughs> See, he's in with a good chance if he thinks of a caption. 
Yeah, he is. He definitely is. Yeah, he's got the talent, I think. Right, take Zoe with the next one. All right, then. Uh, struggling to lose weight through cycling. Uh, that was Sunday's video uh, where Ollie talked you through some of the potential pitfalls. Pete Brown noticed that there definitely wasn't enough time between the flush and opening the door to wash your hands, Ollie. Yeah. Yeah, mm. that is I did very notice that true, too. that. Mm. Yeah. And there's one on the Giro preview show from Vincent Chichener. Looks like the win will go to Tom Demula. No GCN curse for him. Well, yeah, that is true, actually. Poor old Agam Bernal. Marty cursed him. He's I already out. Too. You did too. Double curse. So, yeah. He had no chance to leave. Poor bloke. Yeah, time's going to tell. But uh, Vincenzo Nibali is looking good. I learned my lesson oh, betting against him in 2014. Yeah. Not doing that again. <laughs> uh, right, what is coming up on the channel this week? That's the question. All right, on Wednesday, we have How Not To Be An Idiot while out on the road. Thursday, top seven weird pro cycling superstitions. And Friday is Ask She Share Anything. Yeah, Saturday, we're doing a bit of science. Or rather, Chris and James have done a bit of science. Can music make you ride faster? That's an interesting one. Yeah. And then Sunday, Wow, we got to go behind the scenes with Vincenzo Nibali and his team just prior to the opening prologue time trial. And so that one is coming out on the day of the next Giro TT. So that'll be super, super exciting. exciting yeah. uh, and then of course, Monday it's the racing news show. Tuesday it's the GCN show. And as I mentioned earlier on, if you want to get your fill of Giro action, then make sure you head over to our Facebook page because we've got insight and analysis after every single stage. Oh, exciting. Right, we're getting towards the end of the show, but we have got time for Extreme Corner. And this one comes in from Geordie Lunn, who really is ripping that YT decoy bike. Check out this. Wow, that is pretty good going, isn't it? He's, he's shredded that in Vancouver, isn't he? Yeah, controversial choice, not only a mountain bike, but an e-mountain bike. But nevertheless, I think we can all appreciate some skills mm. on show there. Uh, right, that is unfortunately the end of the GCN show. Quick reminder to head over to the GCN shop for our limited edition uh, t-shirts. And then if you want to watch another video, make sure you check out James's look around the Bahrain Merida team bus. Yeah, super exciting. I got to see some really cool stuff. So do check that out. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. <laughs>